Seekers, and that was a little bit of Everyone's a Winner, originally by Hot Chocolate, only I was kind of copying the version by Ty Seagull, or Seagull, Seagull, anyway, copying that version uh, from his album Freedom's Goblin. So, I got a question from, uh, in the comments section, and it's from someone named Bill, and here is the question. Have you done a video on the relationship between impermanence and time? If so, could you point me toward it? I have heard some, not Buddhist, in parentheses, make the statement that time is an illusion and that time really does not exist. If that is the case, I cannot get my head around how impermanence could exist without time. Okay, so that is the question. So let's see what we can do with that question. Now, one of the first thoughts I had when I was thinking about doing a video on this question is that I can't remember Nishijima Roshi ever lecturing about impermanence or, or hearing the word impermanence used at all. I don't know, it might have been used once or twice, but it wasn't, if it was ever used, it wasn't a word that came up often in his talks. And I thought, that's interesting. I wonder if Dogen ever said anything about impermanence. So I went through Shobo Genzo looking for the word impermanence in the Nishijima Cross version, and I only came across it in a footnote. And that's uh, why I, it explains the reason why I never heard him lecture about it. Because he tended to translate the word mujo, which is the usual word that is translated as impermanence by most sort of Buddhist scholars. He tended to translate that word mujo as that without constancy. So it's a bit of a mouthful to, to say that without constancy instead of impermanence. This may be one of the reasons that most scholars and most translators choose to just use the word impermanence. I think Nishijima Roshi was kind of aware of the way certain words kind of get batted around among, you know, the circles of Buddhist scholars and practitioners and fans and whatnot, and kind of tend to lose their meaning. It's sort of like uh, so, uh, this, this, uh, this story my dad told me. He was talking about how uh, curse words had lost their meaning, and he was talking about being in a cab in New York City in the 50s, and hearing the cab driver getting angry at the guy, the car in front of him, because he wasn't moving when the light turned green, and the cab driver said, it's not getting any effing greener. That was the line, cab driver. And he said that hearing that had such an impact in the 50s, hearing that word, because you didn't hear the F word very often in the 50s, at least, you know, in the circles he traveled in, which was he was living in southern Ohio for most of his life. So he didn't hear that word, and, and, it, and it had a huge impact. Whereas now you hear that word all the time, and it's meaningless. I think the same sort of thing happens with certain words that we use in Buddhist circles that we talk about on people making videos like mine and doing, you know, whatever they do in Buddhist lessons and thingies. Uh, they, they say impermanence all the time, and you hear the word impermanence so often that it, that it becomes a meaningless word, and you don't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't even think about it. So I think Nishijima Roshi might have been aware of that. But here is a place where Dogen does talk about impermanence. He talks about mujo, which Nishijima Roshi translated as uh, that without constancy. So let me read you a bit of the passage. This is from Shobo Genzo Book 2, if you're reading along at home, uh, the Nishijima Cross translation. And it says, The sixth patriarch preaches to disciple Gyosho. That without constancy is the Buddha nature. That which has constancy is the mind that divides all dharmas into good and bad. So I'm going to read you a little bit of what Dogen has to say about this line uh, from the Sixth Patriarch. And uh, here it goes. I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but I'm going to read you some of it. That without constancy, remember this is mujo impermanence, expressed by the Sixth Patriarch is beyond the supposition of non-Buddhists, the two vehicles, and the like. Founding patriarchs and the latest offshoots among non-Buddhists and the two vehicles are without constancy, though they cannot perfectly realize it. Thus, when that without constancy itself preaches, practices, and experiences that without constancy, 
all may be that without constancy. So if we translate that into the way a standard sort of translation would go, it would sound like, thus, when impermanence itself preaches, practices, and experiences impermanence, all may be impermanence. Okay. Now, we go down and here is a line where he talks about permanence, or as Nishijima Roshi and Mike Cross chose to translate it, the constant. He says, The constant is the unchanging. The meaning of the constant is as follows. Even though we turn it into the separating subject and transform it into the separated object, because it is not necessarily connected with the traces of leaving and coming, it is the constant. And I'm going to read you Nishijima Roshi's footnotes on both of these words. So his, his, his uh, footnote on mujō, which is impermanence, that without constancy is. Mujō represents the Sanskrit anitya, anitya, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Mujō is usually understood as an attribute such as impermanence, transiency, inconstancy, etc., but the sixth patriarch's intention is to describe reality itself at the moment of the present. Okay? Now, when he talks about permanence, uh, he goes like this. This is the, the, the footnote that Nishijima Roshi added for permanence as the opposite of impermanence or that with constancy. Okay, you got the picture, right? I hope. Master Dogen interpreted both mujo, absence of constancy, and jo, the constant, or impermanence and permanence, as descriptions of the state just in the moment of the present. Because reality at the present moment is cut off from the past and the future, it cannot be said to remain constant and cannot be said to change. So that, there's, there's the, the key to the whole thing. So how can you have impermanence without time is the question. And I guess the questioner is thinking of if time is an illusion, then you can't have impermanence because impermanence implies that there is time, that, there is, that, that something can only be permanent if it's permanent over a period of time. And that's kind of what Dogen is talking about too, but he's saying there isn't permanence or impermanence. Everything is just as it is in this present moment. In this, this present moment is time. So the best place if you want to get both really confused and to try to understand Dogen's uh, ideas about time, the best place to look at it is uh, Shobogenzo Book 1, and the essay is called Uji, Existence Time, Being Time sometimes. And I wrote about this in my book, Don't Be a Jerk, if you want to read my version of it. You should probably read Dogen's version of it. But my version of it is intended to be easier to read than Dogen's version. And I think I called the chapter Psychedelic Buddhism, which I really regret. <laughs> Sometimes I choose these bad chapter titles that I don't like later on. But anyway, I called it Psychedelic Buddhism because I think it's a really strange chapter. But I want to read you a quote from that chapter. But instead of reading the Nishijima uh, cross translation, I'm going to read you the translation that appears in Dining Katagiri's book, Each Moment is the Universe. I'm not sure whose translation he's using. Uh, since uh, Katagiri Roshi was Japanese, maybe this is his own translation. I'm not sure. But I generally like the translations of, he quotes Uji a lot, he quotes Dogen's essay Being Time uh, a lot in this book, and I generally like the way that Katagiri Roshi phrases things better than the way Nishijima and Cross phrased things. Sorry, Nishijima Roshi, up in Buddha heaven, wherever you are, for insulting you. I just think uh, uh, these versions sound better. Anyway, here is the quote that I like. This appears on page 93. I don't know if every edition of this book is exactly the same, but on mine it's on page 93. Dogen Zenji continues, The self arrays itself and forms the entire universe. Perceive each particular thing in this entire universe as a moment of time. Things do not hinder one another, just as moments do not hinder one another. For this reason, the whole world of time is arousing the way-seeking mind. 
the whole world of the mind is arousing time. The same is true with practice and attaining the way. Thus, the self sets the self out in array and sees itself. This is the understanding that self is time. So, you know, I, I, the, the idea of time that Dogen puts forward is so radically different from our standard idea of time that it's difficult. It takes time to grasp it. Me, personally, I had to read these sections in multiple translations and in the original Japanese for decades before I really got it, uh, when I really felt I understood what he was talking about. And even having done that, I don't think I can express it very well. It's like Dogen spent so much time trying to put this stuff into words that he found probably the best way to put these things into words. At least that's my opinion. That's why I like Dogen so much. And trying to improve upon it is kind of futile. So here's my futile attempt to try to improve upon it or to try to maybe make it a little bit more clear uh, if you're not getting it. So time is we think of time as being linear. We, 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 you know, all grew up looking at those timelines that they, they showed us in school. And those are useful for a certain way of understanding things. And calendars are useful for a certain way of understanding things and, and clocks and watches. I got a friend who's coming over here in about uh, an hour and a half. So I got to think about time as a line to know when my friend is going to show up, you know, and, and, uh, and, and he always gives Ziggy a treat. So that's uh, so Ziggy. But Ziggy probably has a completely different view of time. I've noticed this about Ziggy. He doesn't seem to experience time the way human beings do and it's kind of fascinating to watch but that's a whole maybe that's a whole other video but anyway well maybe that isn't a whole other video because the human way of understanding time we've kind of agreed upon this way of understanding time and it's developed over time over human history uh, one fascinating thing I learned in history class is that the whole idea of time zones became a thing because of railroads, because railroads had to make timetables and they would go across a country where times was different. And people would just, before that, they would just set their clocks according to, you know, noon was when the sun was highest in the sky and that was noon. So noon would be not even in a one, what we think of nowadays as one time zone, noon could be <laughs> spread out you know, in, in a wide distance, but you couldn't do that with, uh, if you're trying to make a railroad timetable, you had to be consistent. So we have, we have inherited this very uh, specific understanding of time that has developed over the years, but in recent times, within the past 200 years, you know, however long railroads have existed, it's become much more fixed than it even was in Dogen's time, which was, you know, he already had, you know, some sort of understanding of time because they did have things to tell time those days. It wasn't exactly clocks, but it's a whole, forget that whole thing. Let's, <laughs> let's just keep talking about time. So time is this moment. Time is, the, the past is a fiction the future is a fiction. So there is no future, there is no past. D despite what you see on Doctor Who and some of my favorite episodes of Star Trek, like City on the Edge of Forever, where you can go back in time, I love those stories. But I don't believe those stories anymore because the past isn't somewhere you can go and the future isn't somewhere you can go. There is only this moment. And this moment cannot be said to be permanent or impermanent because permanence or impermanence only come into the picture when you're talking about time in a linear sense. But Buddhists were aware because time was a thing, even though it wasn't as fixed as it is these days, even back in 2,500 years ago when Buddha started talking. And the people understood that 
people tended to think of time in a linear fashion. So that's why the idea of impermanence was introduced into Buddhism, so that people could have an idea of, of things not of things constantly changing. Because when you're talking about time, things do constantly change, and yet we get in our minds that certain things are permanent. For example, I think myself is permanent. I think this is the same Brad Warner now as the Brad Warner who made yesterday's video. Well, Buddhism would say, no, it isn't the same Brad Warner. There is a whole different Brad Warner, even from the one who started the sentence that I just started. And then when I go to edit this, it'll be a different Brad Warner will be editing this. So time in that sense doesn't exist and, and there is no permanence. That's mujo, that's impermanence. But in when you're really talking about time, in the real sense, in what Dogen calls the real sense of time, in his idea of the real sense of time, you just have to throw away both permanence and impermanence. So that is the answer to the question, and it probably just is more confusing than the question itself, so I apologize for that. Anyway, if you want to send me a donation so I can confuse you some more, you can go to the URL that you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is how I make my living, through donations from nice people like you, and I really appreciate it. But as always, you don't got to donate if you don't want to donate. We will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye. Hey Ziggy, what do you think of impermanence in time? How does time get experienced by you doggies, huh? It's different from how we experience it as humans, right? Well, maybe you'll tell me one of these days. We'll talk to you later. See you around.